guys and girls and welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome and i hope to earn your subscription today so in today's video it's going to be something a little different still pond and fish related but i am getting very close to getting my new fry so i have decided to restart my old uh, daphnia culture and in today's video i'm just starting the process and i'm going to save each video clip and mash them all together so you guys can see how to start and grow your own Daphnia culture, which is absolutely great for koi fry. Helps and grow really, really fast as well. The bigger tub, bucket, barrel, pond, whatever it is uh, you're using to grow your Daphnia, obviously the bigger it is, the quicker they will grow and multiply it. All I use is a very large bucket, one of the ones you can get from B&Q, Wix's. Every four days, they basically, the Daphnia culture double in size. So if you, I don't know, say chuck in 50, 50 Daphnia on day one and you've got the right water qualities, Caesar which which I'll go through step by step with you all, but within four days, you'll have 100. But then when you think about it, when they're all fully grown, takes I think about six days for a for a baby Daphnia to get to adult size I think six days but then again every four days after that that 100 will become 200 and then 200 becomes 400 and so on and so forth and as I say the bigger the container you've got you know when you've got a thousand four days time they become two thousand and that becomes four ten thousand becomes twenty thousand fifty thousand becomes hundred thousand a million becomes two million in four days you know waffling but yeah obviously they can grow really really fast so ideal if you're if you've got a lot of fry great source of free food obviously it doesn't cost you anything and for that sort of stage one fry food and stage two fry food daphnia can, can pretty much be that so it saves you a bit of money it's healthier for the fish and it doesn't turn your pond and tank water like mine was when i was feeding the uh, cop in stage one obviously it was turning my tank water a really sort of brown and murky color whereas again eating live daphnia that isn't gonna gonna have that problem so uh, I'll take you outside and show you how to start it off and go from there so uh, me and this one we'll see you out there catch you in a bit right guys so here we are back out at the uh, the blue vat uh, fish have just been fed and a couple of bits of food left in there so uh, yeah what are we doing out here if we're growing a Daphnia culture you may be thinking well, the first part of growing a Daphnia culture is obviously we need some green water. Um, it's, it's the best, best way to kickstart a Daphnia culture. And the best way to get green water is get water with high nitrites in it um, and ammonia, which is, uh, you may have seen recently on the uh, Bolden Reefers Farm videos that to start a uh, culture for, for his fry, he put in some horse manure um, into a barrel and let that start greening up and breaking down and so on and so forth obviously horse manure is not easy for everybody to get to get and um, like myself um, chicken manure is actually probably one of the best uh, things to use but again don't have chickens my stepdad's got chickens I suppose I could go and nick some from him but this video is all about doing it yourself from home and obviously most of the people that watch my videos have a pond so uh, I'll show you how to uh, to have a Daphnia culture just using your pond so uh, I'm gonna spin you around and uh, show you how to get one started so this is what I'm gonna be using to uh, to start well it's what I used uh, last year for my Daphnia culture as well but it's uh, it's an old bucket um, now with Daphnia cultures uh, I don't know whether you'll, you'll know this but you do need to do regular water changes um, I normally do it once a week when I clean out uh, this filter because I use the water from the filter to go into the Daphne culture and that's that's their water change then um, but by doing it obviously you've got to do one of two things you've either got to remove old water out of here uh, to put in the fresh water um, now obviously the amount of Daphne that's going to be in here by removing any water I'm going to be removing Daphne so you've got two choices you can either take a scoop of water out of here and put it in your fry tanks ponds whatever um, or you can do what I've done because I only like to take the Daphnia out and not the water I'll, I'll show you that once I've got some Daphnia in here um, and how to do that get a bucket that's already split here and here and if I 
haven't got one that's already split just put, just put a small split in it near the top and what I basically do is when I'm doing the water change I keep, keep the splits nice and neat together like that the Daphnia then don't follow the flow but as you're pouring water in water then doesn't spill out of the top it slowly seeps through the crack here and here um, on this bucket which is the reason why I've always used this bucket to do so it's had them cracks in it for about four years but uh, yeah as I say the water seeps slowly through there so when I do the water change fill it up to near the top and then within about half an hour again it's it's back down to the bottom of the crack on there so that's that's basically their water change all right so the first step is get some water in the bucket now the best way to kick start this is use as dirty a water as you possibly can now i do obviously clean this filter out every day but the water in this filter should hopefully be relatively dirty so uh, give me a second and i will uh, crack it open and have a look so in here at the minute, as you can see, it's not overly, overly dirty because it does get cleaned out regularly, but it's dirty enough to uh, to start the filters. So before it overflows, oh, it's too late. I was saying, I need to push that, that down to stop it overflowing, but now some of that waste has gone into the pond. So I'm going to just pop you down, um, sort this out, and then uh, show you what we do. There we go. So I've got the pump off now. Um, so first off, I'm going to grab the... Uh, K1 upflow bed out and you can probably see in there the water is a bit green and ranky lovely that will help so as you can see I don't know if you can see but I can't see my phone screen so I can't really see what you're seeing but that looks uh, relatively dirty in there to the eye so we open the waste valve on there give the K1 a good rinse it's okay with green water but meh bucket a good rinse and then as you've seen in a previous video all I do is just keep raising and lowering the K1 give it a good shake out and that's the K1 all clean uh, I'll just run a bit of this water back through the filter last big green stuff out <laughs> and what I do just to while the valve is still open give the old handle a quick spin I've already put that onto the clean cycle open back up a pump valve That's then hopefully yeah, pouring more green mankiness in there, but it's not going to come up and over back into the pond. It's going to go into the bucket. And when that bucket gets up to the cracks, we will stop. Turn the pump off again for a second. Put the filter back together. So give me a second and I'll snap back to you once I've uh, put all the filter back together. Right, so that's the filter all back together. Just uh, open back up the valve. And now I can hear the water running back through and hopefully that will now start pouring out into the alpha grub. Yeah, here it comes, look. Every jubbly. I think that the pipe's moved because it's creeping up the wall. I think we don't want the uh, water all escaping. Lovely, perfect, thank you. Right. Anyway, as you can now see, kind of, although it's got a big old bit of reflection, but we have some really manky green water, um, which is not only green because of the algae that has been collecting in the uh, filter but it is also the waste, obviously, from the koi, which koi waste works just as well, in my opinion, as horse waste and as uh, chicken manure. 
as you can see that's uh, their second filter clean since uh, it was done so they now need a top up in there so I'm just going to go grab the hose pipe and my uh, sodium fire sulfate and I'm going to get them topped up before we uh, talk about step two so that's them being topped up with the uh, the hose I've not had the dandy line and burdock that's my uh, sodium fire sulfate uh, dechlorinator so uh, there after two days they're getting their what probably about six percent water change and they get that every, every two days at the minute so uh, yeah they're growing like absolute beasts i don't know if you're going to be able to see them in there but the one that was 40 centimeters i would say is well over that now these guys are just i don't know what what it is what's in the air but it's gone a bit cloudy in there now i've just done all, see all, the, all the filter cleans but yeah they are growing like beasts anyway back to the daphnia so yeah as i said we've now got a bucket of uh, manky green water step two is move the bucket of manky green water without soaking yourself um, to force a spot that is full sun as much as long as possible now your daphnia won't be able to live there but we want to get this water as green and as manky as we possibly can within a couple of days basically so full sun is the best bet get the water nice and warm get the sun on it the algae will bloom beautifully in there so give me a second and I'm going to move it to a nice sunny spot of the garden so there we go nice sunny spot of the garden and um, the sun comes over the fence uh, directly as, as you all know by now over there stays that side of the garden the whole day and then sets behind them trees over there so, uh, yeah, you have to excuse it, my neighbour's just mowing their lawn at the minute. But, uh, yeah, so a nice bucket of green and fish waste water. That will sit there now for about two or three days in the sun as much as it possibly can. Once two or three days has passed, I'm happy with uh, the quality of the water. I'm then going to move the bucket from here to somewhere around here. Because um, that will then be shaded by the pond, uh, by the houses, by the fence, and it's going to be so low down that, as you can clearly see, there's still plenty of light getting to there, and the only bit of direct sunlight it's going to get is in the evening when the sun is just above where it is now, above that conker tree, and the sun will come down here and hit the bucket. So it's going to get about an hour of sun a day, but it's going to be in the evening around 5 o'clock, so uh, that won't then get too hot um, to, uh, to kill the Daphnia because Daphnia, like fish, can have crashes. Um, you can overfeed them and that can cause a crash. Um, yeah, there's lots of ways you can lose a culture of Daphnia, but I can also show you a trick um, of what I do while, you're, while you've got a culture of Daphnia. As, as, as I said earlier in, in the intro of the video, they breed like anything. They double in size every four days. So uh, I'll show you the best way to have a uh, backup. Get out of my strawberries, you. Yeah, to have a, uh, a backup Daphnia culture. Last part one. All right, and uh, I will I'm going to show you what, uh, what step two is. All right, so I'll snap back to you all in a minute well i hope that was of uh, some interest to you guys it's, uh, part one of how to start a daphnia culture so that's how to prepare your water and get that all ready for receiving uh, your kickstarter daphnia culture stand by for the next video for part two where we uh, receive the daphnia get them all kick started and then start talking through feeding and looking after them and getting them to uh, grow double in size and keep all healthy we're also later on i'll show you how to keep a backup daphnia culture if there was something to happen to your main one all right so thanks all for watching hope you uh, enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up muchly appreciated and yeah catch you all on the next one